it's time to lock and load. Dusted. Oh crikeys, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. The beep has been removed from this video, and as always, this video is highly educational. Beep, beep, beep. It's time for a Redback Spider Roundup video. The last Redback Roundup was done on the 28th of October and today's Redback Roundup is done on the 28th of February. It's right near the end of summer but we're still in the peak spider season. This Redback Roundup is going to go in a direction we've never gone before looking at spiders around my place because of this most recent discovery and that is the stuff of spider nightmares. It's a male funnel web spider. It's a sort of spider I'm never going to play with. And what is very interesting in our backyard, it's a new arrival to our backyard. The thing that hunts these is operating in our backyard. Well, I've checked the box for educational content by showing that. I can now piss this right off. Before I head out the front to take a look at the first spider lures, take a look at our backyard here. What's it saying to you? Look how lush and green it is. This is our third wet summer. Last year being 2022 was one of the wettest years we ever had and I think it's caused havoc with certain spiders in our garden. In fact, I'm sure of it. I came out the front. Teddy's curious about something we will talk about very soon. I'll go to the first lure, which is up here. Looks like Teddy wants to assist me here. He's going to plague me possibly for the whole video. The first lure is here. This is one that's often been a home to snails. I just carefully undoodle it. It's playing up on me, this one. <clears throat> Phew, finally got there. Let's take a look inside. And it looks pretty clean. What do you think, Bubble? Do you agree? She's coming to help as well. Yes, there's only juvenile snails. Bubble, you can't eat snails. Come on. There's only juvenile snails in there and not much else and I will attempt to get this back on here which is sometimes tricky when I've only got one hand and of course it is going to be tricky on me isn't it? Hmm. With a bit of persistence it does go back on. Okay the next two spider lures I'll take a look at this smaller one first. I can't see any web going on underneath sometimes that's a sign of what's going on inside. And I'll be honest here, it looks clean as a whistle. Mm. Am I surprised that I can't get this back on? <laughs> Not at all. Okay, the Rolls Royce spider lure beside, there's no web underneath, so what's that telling me about what's going to be inside? Mind you, we should not take that as a given, because you always open these up very carefully, because you just never, never know what's hiding inside. On closer inspection, I can see signs of snails activity, plus a cat's tail about to go through frame. Fantastic, isn't it? Having cats around. And taking a look inside the lure here, without using the word trap, it looks like some juvenile snail activity and not much else. It's remarkable how things have changed. And this spider lure is sort of famous for a couple of very famous redback spiders that used to live in here. If you're wondering how I made that spider lure there which has no spiders in it, this is what they're based off. I found these while I was doing my shoplifting study at my local Kmart. They are charcoal starters. These are on clearance special at $6. I'm not quite sure of their full price but if I see something at the right price and it's something that I can use I'm going to grab it. Um, this is the way I use them. That's the up in a sense and I put them up on a, a stake just up off the ground a bit and then the other thing I do is I get a cheap cake tin like this and it goes over the top like this and I will come along and I'll put a little cut in here so it slides down over the handle and that's basically the nebulous of a very luxurious spider lure. And if I was smart I would have just hidden this down my pants and walked straight out of my local Kmart like I see everyone else do lately. Okay, moving to the next two lures with the cats following along. I'll take a look at this one here. Noticing they're showing their age a bit. I think I've had these up for a couple of years. Thank you, Teddy. Uh, we've seen enough of you. <laughs> and I will just well, make a point there's no web here, uh, which is what telling us there's a cat tail going through frame, of course. What's inside? Another cat tail going through frame? <laughs> oh my God, it's killing me. That looks pretty clean. What do you think, Teddy? 
I'm sure he's going to have his consensus as well. Just going in closer on the bottom here, there might be a little bit of whimsical web in here. Uh, I dare say it's historical activity. I can't see anything crawling in here. Mind you, I notice that the viewers see stuff I don't see all the time. But it's situation normal on my channel. Traces of what spiders have done in there, but it seems like fairly historical activity to me. And there's a really sharp, prongy plant that mummy's got here. This thing is like damn razor blades. You know this plant here? Man, they are sharp. You could cut timber with what's going on in those blades there. Man, it's a vicious thing. I don't know my plants, but mummy loves her plants. I'll show you the flower in this because you're probably thinking, oh, Leo, it's something exotic and we've rarely seen anything like this. Even the flower looks gnarly. Look at the spikes going on around that flower. Wow. If it's not Teddy getting in the way, it's then Bubble. And we're going to take a look at this next lure that Bubble's sniffing at. Hey, it makes it really hard when you're here, but it's sort of nice in a way as well. And now Bubble's playing with this, which is why the camera's doing some stupid moves. Hey, you're making my job very hard. Let's take a look at this lure here very carefully. I don't think there was any web underneath, but of course we're always very careful opening this up to see who's residing inside. Okay, I can see some small web here. It's very fine web. I'm seeing if something's going to start crawling out of this web soon, but put it this way, it's not red back spider web, or I'm hoping it's not. Or maybe I should say, I'm hoping it is, because it is the red back spider roundup, isn't it? Uh, very hard when you have no red backs to round up. Um, it's probably historical web, that one. Let's take a look down inside the lure without using the word trap. Take a look there yourself. I can't see anything significant. It looks pretty clean in my books. I've seen way worse than that. That thing with prongs on it is a frippin' nightmare. I'm going to tell Mummy to get rid of that plant because it's doing me in every time I come here. The next lure resides down in the carport area. It's been a place where I've found redbacks in the past and the lure is right there. Okay, the first thing I'm going to say is I can see web, but it's very fine web going on in this area here. I can see a leaf dangling there. See that leaf dangling? It's dangling web. Hmm. And I can also see what looks like a little bit of web activity going on under here, but it's minimalistic. Maybe I'm more worried about that dangler. Just before we go any further, that's what's going on beside me. It goes on all the time, these two. They are brother and sister. They are little cat's offspring. Little cat passed away, I don't know, about five months ago now. And now Teddy's going to wash bubble. But don't worry, that will turn into a full-blown brawl. In a, yeah, see, it's it's licks and bites. I'm going by bubbles. <laughs> She's escaped. But better luck next time, Teddy. She's escaped you. The cats are highly distracting, aren't they? But they're fun to look at. I'll just have a look inside this lure. What do you think is going on in here? Hmm. Just rolling it around in the light where I can. Uh, I'd say there's some historical spider activity going on here, but it's not the sort of spider that we're looking for. I will classify that one as being clean. Of course, Bubbles doing her inspection. She'll report back to what she has found or not found. This area here is also a place where there's stacks of skink activity. And if I'm lucky, I'll be able to get this back on. And I think, apart from the cattail going through, the skinks would be cleaning up anything that's trying to reside in these. The next thing we'll look at is the story of the one that got away. And it's about a redback spider that was setting up under the glass on the front veranda here. And to tell the story, I'm going to have to get a light in the right position here so you can see what's been going on. Moving the camera slowly from the ground where the drop down lines are set up, up to more web that the redback spidling had set up. It had appeared here after a really savage summer storm, a lot of wind in the afternoon, and I'm pretty sure that's how spidlings move around. I can show you some of that storm in this video. Quite a wild one. Some people got some big damage from that storm. That's how it's looking on the weather radar. It doesn't look very good when I see it like that. It looks nasty. Don't like the look at that at all. It's getting very, very sketchy now. I can see some very uh, high wind activity down there. That's down the, the western part of the suburb. It's like a big front just coming through now. 
Okay, yeah, all sorts of debris in this wind as well. It's been a really hot day, like really hot, humid summer day. And this is gonna be a vicious storm. I've just got that feel about it. It's really feeling intense. The people down the road, their trampoline is getting billowed around in the wind. I can see tree debris on the road and it just shows you how much wind there's been. It's really cold. I mean, that's the thing that's really stinging me at the moment. And I'm just gonna turn up this way here. Bit of lightning around. And of course I can't see any cars on the road and I hopefully won't see any people caught in the storm. Oh, there's a car there, a couple of cars there. Get home, guys. Quickly get home. I've just gone out wider on the radar and when we have storms that link up like that in a great big front, that's when we have the worst sort of storms that come through Sydney. This is going to be very interesting when this gets on top of us. Remember, we're looking at this storm because this happened a week before the Redback Spider Roundup and it's storms like this with high winds is how spiderlings can transport themselves from point A to point B and if the conditions are right, they can move a long way in winds like this. Anyway, back to looking at the Redback Spiderlings web that was under the glass in the front porch. I saw the spiderling in this web and I thought to myself, oh, I'll come out and I'll get some video of it the next day. But the next day came around and the spider was gone. All that's left here is its web. Hmm, I wonder what happened to the spiderling. Where is it now? I'm kicking myself I didn't get some pictures of the spiderling. I knew it was a red back in this web here and I'm a bit curious. It could be underneath the carpet over here, maybe. I'm on the other side of the glass now. The spiderling's web was here. And I've always thought maybe she's under here somewhere. Let's take a close look down there. I'm just going to rake this through here. Do we see anything moving? I've got Teddy appearing on me. Okay, something's running up here. What was that? Without Teddy here, it'd be a lot nicer, wouldn't it? There was only a very tiny red back spiderling, and Teddy's going to put his paws all through it again and now sit down. Fantastic. Teddy. You're impossible. You're making this extremely difficult to do today. Okay, I've got a spider on the run here. It's very hard to see. It's a, like a grey spider on grey tiles. I just saw it scampering along here somewhere and it stopped again. There it is there. There it is moving again. What was it? I think it's taken off. Okay, there's little spiders getting around here. Possibly blown in by that giant storm, but they're up against what I see, the remnants of coming in the frame here. Let me go in tighter there. Hmm, do you know what that is? I'll tell you what, I know what laid that is the spider's worst enemy. And before I head out to the backyard to take a look at more spider lures, I do notice something down on the brickwork here, which is sort of curious. It looks like a spider there has had a very bad day at the office. I'll just carefully grab this spider. I think it's dangling on a piece of web, so that might tell you part of the story. Let's see what this is. It's quite a sizable spider. It's a grey spider, so on a grey tile it's going to be a bit harder to see. If I squish its leg, you can see its little hydraulicness working there. Maybe you can tell me what sort of spider that is. It looks like it's been dead for a little bit of time. It would have been a sizable spider uh, when I was all up and running. But uh, it's obviously had a tough time at my place. What I think it is, is a huntsman spider, but one that's not very mature. That's just my gut feeling on that there. Okay, I'm out the backyard now. I'm going to talk about what happened around these tubs here, in particular the blue tub. I'll go to some stills that I took two days ago of what I found in the blue tub. It was a black spider. Now in Australia when we find black spiders like this it spells danger. Initially I didn't know what I was looking at. A friend of mine sent a photo onto a spider expert and it was identified as a male funnel web spider. In the photographs I put things against the spider so you get some sense of the scale of this spider. It's black and shiny. This is a fearsome spider. How it got into the tub, I dare say it was wandering around. May have fallen into the tub and then not able to get out. The tub gets very hot in direct sunlight. I think that's why the spider has died. It's a sort of spider that I would not want to come across when it's alive. What's unusual to me is it's a spider that I have not seen at my place in all the time I've lived here and that's about 16 years. Now what's very interesting to me is, and I've got video of this, we have a new friend in the garden, it's called a bandicoot. 
It's the size of, well, it's bigger than a large rat and it's smaller than a possum and it's a little bit smaller than a small cat. Bandicoots reside on the ground. They hop along a little bit like a kangaroo and they've got a really strange snozzle on the front of them as well. They're very good at digging up things in the garden. In fact, this bandicoot has caused havoc in mummy's garden. But what's most curious about bandicoots is guess what they eat? Funnel web spiders. I can't help but think there's a connection between the bandicoot appearing and this male funnel web spider probably fearing for its life trying to get out of our backyard after the bandicoot's been chasing it down for a couple of weeks now. Our little friend the bandicoot, it's astonishing how much cat food it can eat. It seems to hoe into anything that's available and as I look around the backyard I will show you some of its diggings. It's incredible what this nocturnal marsupial can do considering it's so small it can dig a hell of a hole. Bandicoots are a protective native Australian marsupial and like lots of the critters that you find in Australia it's almost like a mashup of different things and when whitefellas came to Australia they had never seen such strange animals and the bandicoot would fall into that category. They're solitary critters that don't climb and if I was going to describe the size of a bandicoot it's more like the size of a rabbit. I think that's a clearer way of explaining it. Bandicoots are opportunistic carnivores who eat plants, animals, insects, lizards, mice, snails, fungi, seeds, berries, fruit, cat food and thankfully funnel web spiders. It's astonishing what bandicoots eat, they basically eat anything. It's certainly a fantastic new backyard critter to have hanging around. I hope I'll see lots more of our friendly bandicoot. Okay, the backyard again. It's a stinking humid day, the sun is trying to pop out. I'm going to start with the lures there. I'll work in an anti-clockwise direction, going that way through the backyard, and I will finish off looking at some stink bugs on the citrus tree. Guess what's going to happen to them? <laughs> okay, these three lures here. Now, the first thing I can say is I'm not seeing any web that I want to see going on around here. If there was the spider that I'm after working here, you would see the webs coming out all over the place. Mummy's got a freaking another spiky plant here. What is this thing? Get rid of this here. Hopefully, my, oops, Mummy won't see that. I think it's aloe vera, isn't it? Oops, sorry, Mummy. That's going to get Mummy annoyed, isn't it? I'll just uh, carefully hide that in the back of the garden somewhere. She won't see this at all. And I can hide that by spinning this round. Just don't tell Mummy what we just did, eh? Okay, this lure here, which is so called the El Chibo simplistic one. Nope. Zero going on there. Uh, this next one here. What's the chances of a spider, hey? Hmm, let me take a closer look at what that is there. I've got a cranky dog trying to attack me now. We will persist. It looks like snail scat. I can't say the word shit or poop, so we use the word scat. I think that's what that is there. Like some of the lures out the front, there is some small web there, very old historical sort of web. I can't see a spider. Crikey, Charlie's boring. This bigger lure here, which is a fairly cheap one to buy and set up. It's just a, a bucket with a pot stand in the sense. Let's see what's going on here. Hmm, I can see web here. Sorry for the puppy dog noise. Uh, I can see web here, but I can't see a spider going on. Unless you can see something scampering for its life. I think it's all historical spider web. Hmm, and Teddy's actually just rubbing around me. If you're wondering where Teddy is, don't worry. He's right beside me. You see, to him it's just a game, and then a bubble appears, and anything could happen from this point on. They're both very inquisitive about what I'm up to. Maybe they're going to have a mini brawl, or maybe nothing this time around, hey? But we'll catch up with fighting with your sister later on, won't we, Teddy? Apart from the lures having their redback spiders, the other place that redbacks love to live is underneath black pots like this. They will get up inside the handles here. That's why they're so dangerous. You put your hand up there, you've got a nice nip from a spider. No web around here, guess what? No spiders. There's certainly lots of pots in the garden here and that is perfect areas for redbacks and I'm not seeing any web at all. It's actually astonishing for the fact it's so hard to find redback spiders now. 
Bubble and Teddy, this is part of their favourite skink hunting area. There's so many skinks they've brought into the house, it would be hundreds. They do go out alive, most of them. They're not killing them, they're just bringing them in as things to say, I love you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up this log once Bubble has decided to move on. I want to move the log Bubble. <coughs> She's being a log herself at the moment. There's a little rule in Australia that you always look underneath something before you lift it. Always put gloves on before you're going to do something like this. Don't be like me, not have any gloves. I will get Bubble out of the way. <laughs> you go and I'm a bit curious what's going to appear when I roll this over if I go that way who's living under there well it took about two seconds and Mr. Inquisitive and Mrs. Inquisitive have decided to basically take out the whole shot thank you guys thank you very much I was trying to show you hopefully where mole crickets were hanging out but of course this one just thinks it's a total game come on bubble <laughs> that's enough please come on out of here good girl Good girl. What I really wanted to see uh, didn't go running for its life, and that was <laughs> a funnel web spider. Hmm. Maybe be careful what you wish for, hey, and watch out, Bubble. I don't want to do your paws in by putting that back into place. Well, she's found something in there now she's going to dig out. Very cat like the way they carry on. I tell you, these two will investigate anything. Just looking around Mummy's garden, there's something here I don't like the look of. I'm seeing a web like that. And I'll be honest here, it looks like redback spider activity. What I don't like about it is it's a really messy matrix of web. Uh, it's got all the hallmarks of being a redback spider, um, maybe a more mature one. And if there's drop down lines going down to the bottom, it'd be definitely redback. I'm not sure whether the drop down lines are there, so part of me is a little bit skeptical. I'll give this area a very, very careful lick of fire. I will move these little plants away. Uh, or else I'll get into lots of trouble from mummy. It's gonna be a real custom lick of fire. Here we go. Okay, let's see what dropped. Well, just looking around here, I'm not seeing what I wanna see. Maybe I'll have to move the pots around a bit. I'll move things apart. It might tell a bigger story. Okay. I can see the red back, yes, it was a red back spider. Let me get it out. Maybe you can just see her red back going on there. Okay. There she is there. It's not a full size red back, it's maturing. It's got the nice red stripe on the back. I'm a bit alarmed mummy didn't identify this web and tell me what was going on here. She's pretty good at telling me where the red backs are setting up. Uh, this one mainly of blown in on the storm in a sense it may be a newcomer to the backyard there's no egg sacs here which is a good sign but it's worrying for the fact I found this red back and it's the first one I've found in what is a very long time in the backyard and I was only just talking about how they love to set up underneath pots like this quite alarming isn't it I better put these pots back or else mummy will work out I've been a naughty boy with a flamethrower again with that red back I just nabbed at the flamethrower if I put it next to the funnel web spider you can have a bit of a look at the dynamic duo of nasty spiders in Australia wonderful isn't it as I always say Australia is not for everyone this is against the back fence and you can just see how lush and crazy the garden is getting all the mummy stuff growing here if I pan across this way there are tubs that mummy has set up and there's a tub here that was featured when I was releasing the frogs that Teddy was bringing into the house and the frogs are being released in this tub here. It's where frogs love to live. And mummy taught me something about frogs and she knew about frogs more than me. And if you see like a matrix of bubbles, which I'm gonna show you here, that there is frogs eggs. And from that you get tadpoles and from that you get frogs. It's amazing down here at night, the amount of frog croaks and noises you hear has really elevated once we've had these wet years. And you know what I like about frogs? They eat spiders. And while I'm looking at the backyard here for the obvious signs of redbacks, I will show you what bandicoots get up to. And there's a prime example of it right here. This is very typical of what the bandicoot's been up to in our backyard. It's a conical size hole. This one's a medium size hole as I'll call it. They can be very deep. The bandicoot's got a long nozzle on it and it will just keep burrowing until it's got what it wants. It seems to have a sixth sense about what's underground and it won't stop until it's got it. 
it throws all of the dirt out to the back here and mummy has been in a constant battle of covering these types of holes up and I'm trying to <laughs> save a garden from bandicoot attack apart from the garden the bandicoots will just go for something in the middle of the grass and you'll end up with fantastically aerated lawns from bandicoots again it's a conical shaped hole it's quite deep you can see the scale of this thing going on with my hand there and again mummy's been constantly covering these things up trying to fill them in from the bandicoots activities just thinking about holes in the ground and that funnel web spider that has turned up at our place I'm pretty sure if there was ever a funnel web hole in our backyard I would have been able to identify it, I would have made a lot of noise about it. I grew up in a part of Sydney where funnel webs were fairly common and you might come to a area of your garden like this which is a bit moist and damp and what you would find would be sometimes a series of holes and the holes would have distinctive web around them. It looked like cicada holes but they had web on them which made them very different. Well, I'm going to take you on a bit of a journey. It's a trip back in time for me because I want to show you a funnel web spider's nest. And you're probably thinking, well, Leo, how do you know they're here at this children's park? Well, 45 years ago, I was a kid in this area. Mind you, this park looks radically different. And if I go to a spot I remember as a kid where funnel webs hung out, I bet you they're still there. What's blowing my mind is how established the trees are here because when I was a kid this was just a completely open grassed park. Makes you feel old when things look so different and trees, established trees, are telling me that I'm not a spring chicken. But when I take a look at the park here, it's very interesting to look at the lay of the land. If I go to that area there, there's an easement under me, so the water runs underneath me here and there's a creek further on. Now the place to look for the funnel webs, as I remember as a kid, was up along the fence lines, in particular, up along the fence line up in that area there, the high ground. This being the lowest part of the park, it just gets too wet for them and they will get drowned out of their nest. And they like shaded areas and we'll start heading up to the high ground funnel web zone. Funnel web nests are fairly easy to spot. They're quite large, they're very distinctive and sometimes a spider will disguise the entrance of the nest with some leaves but it's the web that gives it away now let me have a very careful look in this area here I'm walking very carefully near the fence line of this park it's nice soft earth here it's nice and shaded and as I walk uphill here hopefully I'll come across exactly what I want to find and I believe I've struck gold right in the middle of the screen Frippin' hell, it's massive. Here's a different angle of the funnel web's nest. It looks like it's weaved a leaf into the entrance of the nest there. It's quite a sizable hole. I'm going to put something next to the hole there so you can gauge its size. You'll get a shock. I'm certainly not going to put my fingers near that hole, but if I put my car keys next to the hole there, you might get some sense of scale. So yes, it's a sizable hole. I could easily stick my thumb down that hole, but there's not a chance I'll be doing that today. I will retrieve my car keys before they get taken out. What you also have to be aware of, sure we can see that nest there quite clearly, but sometimes there can be a leaf covering it up like that. Puts a whole new perspective to this part of town, doesn't it? And remember, this is a children's playground. Wow. Of course, I had my iPhone with me. I took some pretty pictures of this lovely children's park. But what you really want to see is what's hiding inside that funnel web nest. What I can see is the world's most deadly spider. It's the stuff of nightmares, and I bet you've just cancelled any intentions of visiting or living in Australia now. Those slick Australian tourism commercials never show you stuff like this. I wonder why. Before I leave this nest, I'm just going to tease this leaf to see if it is attached to the whole nest. It sure is. It's been completely webbed in. Ooh, I hope the spidey doesn't come out. I would run for my life. It's really interesting to see that funnel web hole and it puts a totally different perspective on this park and what's hidden under any leaf that's around me. The other thing about funnel webs is that hole there and if we look around carefully here I'm absolutely certain I'm going to find more because that's the sort of critters they are. I've just got to look very carefully here. Extremely carefully. I really don't like being here I'll be honest here. But when I was a kid you didn't think much about it. But you think a lot about it as an adult and I've found another nest. It's right there, right in the middle of screen. This is a horror story. 
this nest here is a bit of a different design. It's on the side a bit. It has got leaves weaved into it as well. Very strong, the web that's used in this. Wow, it's frightening, isn't it? When you just see how they set up. I'm gonna very carefully tiptoe out of here. Uh, I don't want to find any more. I'm starting to scare myself, but I've made a point about funnel web spiders. I know where they live in Sydney. Uh, I can't find that in my backyard. That's why I've come to the park where I grew up in Sydney. And I remember as a kid, the funnel web is always up in this part of the park. It's a reminder really to keep off the high ground, isn't it? Before I completely leave this park, and when I was playing here, it was way back in the late 70s. My God, I'm getting old. There's another thing I want to show you, which is, I think, connected to what we just looked at. Now, that's a curious sign. Let's read what this one says. Caution, swooping magpies. Well, from what I've just seen, that's the least of your worries here. It should read, caution, funnel web spiders. I'll keep walking along here. And it's a beautiful park. It's actually shaped like a dog bone. There's like two bulbous parts of park with this path joining it all together. What I'm totally surprised at is how much vegetation there is here now. It's so different versus when I was a kid. We're coming to the other opening of the park. And when I was young playing around here, you could look straight across the creek here and see an open park clearly. Well, you can't do that anymore. From memory, there's a creek crossing right where this sewerage manhole is. Uh, see if it's still here. Oh, okay. That's amazing. This looks near identical to when I was a kid. This is the part where you can cross over the creek here and go up into the other park. That's strangely frozen in time in my mind. I'm at the other end of the park and there's some curious diggings here, I believe. That's what rabbits have been up to because of what's been left behind in the area. But it's what's around this sign here, which is very curious. Now my gut feeling about this hole here is it's a bandicoot hole because of the shape of the hole, the lack of rabbit droppings here. And it just says bandicoot to me, but what's near this is very curious indeed. That's the hole we just looked at. If I very carefully walk over this side and don't arouse the ground too much, Guess what I'm gonna find? What do you think I could find in this part of town? Can you see it? It's right in the middle of the screen. That's right. It's another funnel web spider hole. And that's an average size one. Like I said, swooping magpies is not the big problem here. Anyway, after that fun festival of looking at funnel web nests, we'll go back to our regular show. The pumpkin vine's been going all right this year. There's a nice pumpkin here, and beside the pumpkin, I've got two spider lures that we're gonna take a look at. I can't see any web around these, so when I see no web, I can't see anything going on in there at all. Crazy, and this is like prime position for redbacks here, and this one here as well. Again, there's no web underneath. What's gonna be going on inside? I think what we're dealing with there is some historical web from whatever, and it's long gone. Although you'll say, ah, oh, but there's a spider in there, you never look properly. Well, I can't see anything that interesting, so that's enough of that one. That was those two spider lures there, and there's one tucked in the background there, almost hiding in the garden. Had to come in an awkward way to see this one here. There's no web going on underneath, but you just never know what's going on inside until you take a look. And we'll just very quickly look in here. I can't see anything scampering for its life. It looks fairly clean. Looking down inside the lure, I can see snail activity. I can see a little bit of historical web. There might be a little tiny spider in here somewhere. See that web connected to my... There is a spider there, but I don't think it's just down there. Or is it a spider or not? I don't know. Maybe it's gone now because I tweezed it to death. Uh, but it's not what I want to see. Of course, the prize is getting red backs in these lures. That's what they were set up for. No red backs, no fun. Okay, this part of the backyard used to have tubs lined up. It used to be infamous for redback spiders. I think there were black tubs and green tubs here. Many a redback spider was found here by the raking monkey tool. All that's been changed for a little while now, and there's now garden beds that reside here. There used to be spider lures in this area here, but they've been moved to a slightly different spot. Up along the garden a bit was one of the lures that was in the back corner before. I can't see any web underneath. What's that saying to us, eh? Looks pretty clean inside. There's a little bit of very sketchy, small amount of web going on there. 
What is that thing there? Nah, it's just disintegrated, whatever it was. <laughs> well, it's no longer. I can't see anything in there. Hmm. Much more fun when there were stacks of redbacks around, wasn't it? Okay, so I was just over there. I can see Bubble about to pounce on something there. I'm going to come and look at the citrus trees, but underneath this citrus tree here, something I don't like the look of. Where this lemon grass is growing, I can see some fairly sketchy web going on in here. Yeah, maybe a little tiny lick of fire will resolve the issue. That's all it needs. I'm not sure whether we're going to find anything. It may not have been red back. If it was a red back, it would have been very small. But if it was a spider at all, guess what? It's incinerated. And while we're thinking about incineration, I've got some stink bugs to deal with. This is a citrus tree that I shot the 1000 frames a second versus stink bug and fire on. You can see the dieback that's going on where the flamethrower has gone through. It's very brief periods of time that it happens. Mummy sometimes clips back the dieback areas if she can reach, but I've noticed there is a group of stink bugs going on up the back there. This tree has been a bit of a problematic tree for stink bugs. The citrus tree next to the problematic one was the one that I shot the detergent versus flamethrower video on. What's really nice is it's coming into fruit now. We've been through the flowering stage. I can see fruit starting to develop on this tree. There's lots of little bits of fruit going to happen. But if I look carefully here, I will find a couple of stink bugs. It's definitely time to lock and load. Dusted. 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 I absolutely love dealing with stink bugs and I know the damage that they can do to citrus trees. Teddy did jump into the workout what was dropping to the ground. I hope he doesn't bring one of those wretched things inside. I'm glad I did my red back spider roundup. It's basically the end of our summer. And I didn't do many red back roundups because, well, guess what? There haven't been many red back spiders around. Something has radically changed the dynamic of the backyard. We've had that really wet summers, massively wet year last year. But we also had that wacko Tongan volcano that blew up and no one talks about that, but I think that's done something to the climate. I dare not say the word climate change. There are some people might get razzed up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and for God's sake, I hope you learned something along the way or else I get flagged off the side as per usual. Please let me say this at the end of the video here. It was really unusual going back to that park and I've done the math now. It's 44 years since I've been there. I did speak to some people in the park and this part of town these days is a place where people don't really like talking to each other. There's lots of very wealthy new immigrants into Australia who live in this part of the city now. Of course, I explained what I was up to and I showed some of them the photographs that I had taken around the park. None of them understood what I was looking at. Even when I started talking about funnel web spiders, I was getting a lot of blank faces looking back at me. I dare say they just saw me as some lunatic that's blown in from another suburb. That's the perception I was getting from some people there. I'm still semi-giggling about seeing the swooping magpie warning and also the way how to avoid swooping magpies it made me laugh. But really what shook me was the trees. The trees are like guardians of time. And the old trees that I remember being a kid in the park, well these days they're very old trees and are really showing their age. I felt as old as those old trees. But one thing that hasn't changed is the funnel web spiders like having the high ground in the best real estate in Sydney. A $4 million house here would come with some very interesting inclusions in the garden.